this channel is fast approaching 200 subscribers. So I thank you to all to, that have subscribed. If you're enjoying these videos, uh, please consider subscribing. I'd like to get um, at least a thousand subscribers because that will help get the message across. Um, also, when people subscribe and click and click the like button, that gives me a little bit more motivation to keep going with these videos. Motivation is important because the last thing I want to be doing uh, is putting out videos or talking to people when really no one's interested. So, if there's if 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 there are a lot of if the views keep uh, increasing, if the likes are increasing and the subscribers are increasing, that gives me uh, motivation. It also gives me a signal that people want to hear these talks from me and what I'm sharing. So that motivates me to keep going. So thank you for that. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, please consider. Okay, today we're going to talk about revenge, resentment respect and how to deal with confrontation from from that angle i guess from from the resentment revenge angle because confrontation is is a huge topic right there's many angles to confrontation so today i'll talk about the angle of revenge and resent now the problem with resent resentment right it just doesn't occur uh, just from one or two experiences or just once or twice it can occur from childhood teenage years all the way up into adulthood I know people that are in their 60s and 70s and I even remember my father at the age of 80 talking about certain things as a kid uh, we can resent things for a long time people can resent things for a long time not only in not only in this life like for example if someone in our family was hurt uh, that like for example a, 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 a great grandfather or a great uncle or a great aunt or a cousin that we never met was hurt right you know a hundred years ago that still stems into the family tree and it's still talked about like I remember in the Second World War I had fam family uh, family pass away during that time um, unfortunately, right? I don't want to go too deep into that because it's, it'll deviate from the, from this topic, but basically that affected me as a kid because I never got to meet my uncle, one of my uncles, right? His life was taken at an early age, right? So I was cheated out of meeting my uncle, right? So this is the thing with war and I wanted to talk about war and all these things. I've done some videos on war, but see... There's no victors in a war because the problem is there's resentment and there's going to be blowback all the time. There's no such thing as winning a war. You've won the battle, but you've, you'll never win the war because whenever you've beaten people, there's always a resentment. And this is the problem with war and there's the collateral damage and it just doesn't stop. Right. And the next generations will suffer. The next generations will suffer because of it. Like even now we're seeing where... Uh, people are getting blamed for what their great grandfathers did, like you know. For example, uh, we're getting we're seeing this with slavery reparations and things like this, which I'll talk about because I'm against slavery. But I'll talk about that in depth some other time because that requires a whole discussion. But see, this is the thing. This is a this is the thing about resentment, how bad it is. Like, for example, if my great grandfather was enslaved by someone else's great grandfather. Um, I'll probably have resentment towards that family today, right? Not because I've got hate in my heart, because I think it's just only natural, right? It's only natural. But this is the problem. This is the problem why we're talking about creating peace in oneself. And we're talking about creating peace out there. So this is the choice you have to make as a Buddhist anyway, if you want to choose the path of peace for yourself and have tranquility and serenity within and goodness knows, you know, achieving Nirodo Hoti or cessation of Dukkha, uh, you need to d travel down the path of peace. And this is why it's so difficult to be a spiritual warrior, because you have to overcome all these injustices in life, right, that are done to you, to others. But this is what's got, this is always going on in the world. It's, it's never stopped. You know, that's why wars keep going on and on and on, because one, one gets conquered and then, a hundred years later, they get stronger and then they want to conquer 
the people that uh, the conquerors because there's resentment because there was bloodshed this is the problem with bloodshed once there's bloodshed people will remember for a long time people will remember for a long time people won't forget and this is why uh, as Buddhists we have to well I'd say we have to but I think it's indeed necessary to uh, to reflect on this on a deep level for oneself so the first of all so I guess the first action here would be to be aware of your verbal action your physical action and how you're thinking towards everybody else around you right we talk about equality we talk about harmony we talk about peace but our actions are not in line with that individually right on a mass scale okay on a mass scale so this is where the Buddhist has to dig deep and start working on okay so your speech towards others is very very important and Buddha always talked talked about right speech words that were sweet that were endure, were endearing uh, that were pleasant to listen to right even when you're telling the truth there's a way to tell the truth it doesn't have to be so brutal sometimes but the main thing is is whenever you're coming across people and I mean, I wish I learned this at the age of five, right, or four, how to, how to do this, because I would have saved myself a lot of enemies, uh, you know, during, in primary school and high school. But even then, see, people will remember. Like I had a school friend who I think was the age of 13, 14, uh, was, was uh, gotten in an altercation with someone else, and they met at a reunion some 20 years later. That person still remembered and he confronted that other person on the spot and it was very tense and uncomfortable because unpleasant situations, injustices don't go away in the mind. People remember them. This is why it's so important to teach our family, to teach the young generation, to teach our kids how important it is to conduct themselves with other people. This is why etiquette is important for this reason. You know, this old school etiquette, people say, ah, oh, you know, it's not necessary. No, it is. There, there's a big place for it. Etiquette, in other words, how you conduct yourself with others, is profitable because the less you disrespect others, the less you you abuse others, the less you inflict pain on others, the less enemies you're going to have in the long run, and the less people will want to take revenge on you, right? So this is something that we have to learn as a culture, as a, as a people, but individually as well because it's very important uh, enemies are not they're not welcome and they can get you at any time there's many ways someone can take revenge and this is the reality you know in the old days you know people thought uh, you know they'll take you out in the street but these days these days this the people people are doing so many things to get at people it's, it's you know canceling people canceling their bank accounts People can throw a brick through your window, can slash your tires. Uh, they can hurt a, a member of your family. It, this is serious business. This is serious business. The reason why I'm talking about this topic is because lately uh, I've been hearing from, from some supporters, some issues in the community and what's going on. It's getting hot out there. And uh, the, the race, there's this race issue right now that's boiling over in Western countries immigration issue there's a inflation issue there's so many issues going on but there's no talk of peace there's not enough talk of peace and how do we work it out how do we work this thing out and it seems like most people um, at least the gut in terms of the governments all they want to do is still go to war not understanding that they're creating enemies in the long run for themselves rather than rather than trying to talk uh, have discussions for peace these people are doing nothing but warmongering which is going to create problems for all of us in the future right when one country attacks another country or or and other countries get involved we're creating enemies whether we like it or not right it's in a hundred years down the track our future generations are going to suffer because of this right for example australia getting involved in this war or or sending arms and same with italy and same with america getting involved in this war in 50 years time Russian people will remember that it's not just whether you win the war now but 50 years later the Russian people will remember this 
And the Ukrainian people are going to remember also what Russia... See, I'm not condoning what Russia did. I'm saying the war is just bad on both sides. Okay? The war is just bad on both sides. But individually on the street... And I'll give you another example. I remember a friend of mine when I was about 14, 15. Um, he really surprised me one day because he attacked someone. Another friend of mine. And he went and hit the person. But I'm not going to talk too much about it right but anyway there was an altercation okay and then later I asked him I said what was that all about he said well when I was eight years old this guy picked on me in front of people and he and he and he pushed me around and he uh, threw me to the ground so you know now I'm bigger than him I decided to take revenge now this is the reality of life excuse me there's a lot of mosquitoes here this is the reality of life okay this is the reality so, you know, even as kids, when you offend someone, that person could probably remember for a long, long time. You know, look at yourself or you reflect yourself. So this is what, in order to stop doing this, in order to stop the progression of more enemies, of creating more enemies, it's important that you conduct yourself in an ethical way in a, in a, and, and develop some kind of etiquette, moral etiquette towards everybody. Now, of course... It's not a silver bullet. Some people you just can't win, right? We know this. Some people we just can't win. No matter what you do, no matter how hard you try, uh, it just doesn't work, right? And we know as people, sometimes people just don't like the way you look. Like I know that as a fact for myself. Some people don't like the way for you look or, or the religion that you are or whatever you are. But that doesn't give you reason to create abuse back remember that remember it's a two-way street so this is the thing about fighting about uh, violence and about bad behavior about bad moral behavior see the hollywood likes to find the moral justification so in other words see that person he did a lot of bad stuff so it morally justifies the the reaction right but what they're not telling you is that reaction creates is an action by that other person that has consequences. Now, this is what we're not talking about. So, you know, the street talk is, you know, oh, that person had it coming. You know, that person des deserved a beatdown, whatever. But the person doing the beatdown, right, there's a consequence. There's going to be a consequence down the road somewhere, right? It's not, it's, it's, and also, when you beat down someone, remember that that person will remember and you never know what will happen, right? And with, that's in terms of the physical violence. In terms of the verbal violence, which verbal violence is what stings even deeper. When you say certain words to certain people um, or you, you talk in a disrespectful way, um, that will create resentment and revenge as well. Talk can lead to a lot of bad problems, right? Like talk can lead to... Uh, to peace, talk can lead to violence, right? So in this war, this current war in Ukraine, Russia, it's not the only current war going on. There's still uh, the problem in Palestine, in Syria right now, and other countries that I'm not aware of, right? There's no diplomatic talks going on. So the talk is not directed to, to peace. The physical action is not directed to peace. And the mental and the mental stance, the mental perception here is we, it's us and them. We hate them. They're our enemies. Etc. And this just will just keep going back and forth, back and forth, until every, everyone's destroyed. Because even if they are to win for a period of time, we've seen what happens to all empires in the long run. Okay, at some point, at some point, this is it, it, you know it, it either has to change or, or maybe it won't. Maybe this is just the human condition. Maybe this is why Dukkha is Dukkha. Maybe why this is craving is craving. And the only way out is finding cessate is to realize cessation of uh, cessation of uh, of ignorance, right? Cessation of samudayo, samudayo, right? So for ignorance to be destroyed, for cessation of dukkha to occur, well, this is where it's the development comes in, the development of the four Brahma Viharas, which I've talked about: goodwill for oneself, goodwill for others. Usually this this is difficult to do. There's you know we can talk about you can do the talk, but can you do the walk? Can you walk the walk? 
right? In terms of like, even if someone does bad for you, bad to you, can you, can you uh, draw the line and not go over it, right? Because remember, once you've gone over the line, you've committed that action. So there's going to be a consequence. Sure, you got yourself out of that situation, but you've created another situation, which is consequence. When you hurt someone, you hurt someone. Unfortunately, this is the brutality of life. When you have to protect yourself, when you have to defend yourself, when some, when, and I mean sincerely and genuinely, when someone is coming to attack you for no apparent reason or you've done your best to try to stay out of the way and the person still insists or the people still insist, well, you need to protect yourself. I'm not saying kill. I'm not saying, I'm not saying uh, go out of your way, but protecting yourself, it, the intention is void, is void of violence. You're just trying to self-sustain. You're trying to protect your person. In that sense, I think you have a duty to. But guess what? This is where it gets even harder because uh, as a monk, you know, that's that might not be the way because in other ways you could look at it as if you're getting attacked. I'm not saying this is the only way, but this is a way. When that violence comes to you, maybe it's something because as a consequence of something you did. So maybe it's better not to fight back better not to protect yourself and just take it in order to pay the debt. That's one That's one uh, view, but not very popular. And I don't think most people will subscribe to that. But I think the best thing is to be like a Tai Chi, like Kung Fu, like Kung Fu fighting where you can, uh, you can uh, disengage the person or you can stop the person without hurting them. That's the best. If, you, if you're able to, like... Uh, uh, de-escalate the situation to where both of you don't get hurt that's the best outcome actually that's the best outcome instead of going if you can do that that's the best but you know practicalities is you know if if uh you know loved ones are around there's vulnerable people around well it's too easy to say i'll just let it go it's not going to work even as a buddhist monk i wouldn't like if someone was to approach my mother or some or or, or, or some or my father or my father's not here anymore but I'm just saying someone elderly I would definitely protect them right I'm not saying I'm going I've, I've got the intention to hurt that person but I will protect them so even as a monk you know I have to confess that I would do that right I often ask myself what would the Buddha do if his mother or father uh, was was uh, threatened? with violence i often wonder i want i want i there's so many things that go through my mind about that like for example i i think would the buddha stay under the tree and just meditate and uh, ignore it and just let it happen uh would he stand in front of the of the culprit or what would he do you know i often wonder i often wonder about that although it never happened but i often wonder that question it's a it's a hard question to answer if you think you've got the answer to that why don't you put down a comment put it in the comment section and let me know what you think what the buddha would do in that situation right so the situation is if the buddha's mother or father or son were threatened or, or what would he do but what we saw when when uh devadatta tried to take his life a few times the buddha didn't react violently at all he absorbed it but i wonder what would happen but the buddha i mean we're talking about the buddha standard um but I wonder what would happen if his father or mother or or the you know family or you know loved ones were under attack. What he would do? I'm I'm just I'm I'm wondering if he would just sit back and let that happen. I'm not sure. Very hard to say. Even as a monk, I'm really not sure. I'm not saying definitely Buddha wouldn't go out with guns blazing, but I'm sure he would find a wise method to deal with it. Now, this is what I want to talk about: the wise path, right? The wisdom path is when you've you've incited resentment uh in someone and they want to take revenge on you how you deal with that uh is really important the best thing the best outcome is not to hurt either of not to hurt that person or yourself right physically that's the best outcome that's the best that's what we try to shoot for second best you disarm the person or whatever if it's a physical altercation right but you are allowed to protect yourself that's having goodwill for yourself and 
protect yourself enough. There's, you don't have to stomp the guy's head. You don't have to um, hurt the guy to a point. You know, as long as it's enough and you're and you're out of danger's way, then I guess that's enough. But see, that might be taken as me inciting violence. I'm not, right? What I'm talking about, the best outcome is there's no harm to the to the opponent or yourself. That's what I'm aiming for. I'm talking about if second best and third best, if it gets to that, then you know try to try to do no harm at all. That's better. Right? Certainly no no killing or anything like that. So I've got to be careful here because I don't want to be saying things or inciting violence and stuff like that because it's against the rules as a monk. And I have to be careful of this, right? So please understand my intention here. What I'm getting at is it's very complicated when someone is resent has resent towards you. It's very complicated when someone wants revenge against you, especially of something you did a long time ago to that person. And if you if you have a sober analysis of your own actions and a, a mature reflection on your past when someone's done wrong by you, how do you feel about it if you had your chance to get back at that person? See, this is the trick, right? On the Buddhist path, we have to turn that around. We have to let it go, which is difficult to do for most people, right? difficult to do but nonetheless like I said in my one of my previous videos doing what has to be done because what we want to do is we want the the mind to release from the five aggregates we want the ignorance to be totally destroyed we want rebirth to be destroyed and shattered there'll be no coming back right so that's what we're aiming for as well to keep that in mind we're not aiming just to have a good life etc etc we're aiming for total destruction and total total disconnection from craving and clinging and to realize cessation of dukkha right we want the chitta uh the chitta the mind to totally be released right we want atta to be gone right we want to understand uh not self the anicca dukkha manatta right impermanence stress suffering uh not self right but these things are really important when we're dealing with uh uh, revenge and resentment I think unfortunately it's a bit late it's a bit late in my life I'm over 50 and I'm speaking these things but if you have little children if you have young ones around you start teaching them about verbal etiquette physical etiquette mental etiquette it's it will serve them well right but I'm not saying uh, that then they aren't to protect themselves against the bully or anything else. They can protect themselves. Protecting yourself is not violent. Like I said, locking your door at night um, or, lock, or locking the door when you go to the bathroom or you're changing your clothes is not violence. It's protecting yourself. So when you're protecting your person, the intention in your heart and your mind is not to hurt anybody. You know, like if you get a, a an anonymous or a sporadic attack by someone, it's not like you woke up that day thinking, I'm going to hurt this person this person over here you're walking in the mall and someone approaches you um the intention's not there to hurt anybody but you've got to you know you protect yourself right and the best way to protect yourself is to do no harm to that person and no harm to yourself that way the consequences are minimized right remember a monk um made a grave mistake um where he said where he saw um someone getting executed right and someone and the executioner uh, i think he was using a, an axe or a, or a sword and he hit the person chopped the person three or four times before the the head came off and the monk said to that person you should learn to do it in one strike right so the person doesn't suffer and the buddha said oh you silly you fool monk you've just you've just been defeated Right? You've just been defeated. You just committed a parajika action. You've... And why is that? Because the monk said the wrong thing there. Right? The, the monk was thought he was being compassionate to the to the person getting executed, but the right thing would have been to said, How about you not kill the person at all? How about you just don't chop the person's head off at all? So that per that monk had to disrobe there and then. The Buddha made him disrobe. So this is why the rule is in place like as a monk, uh, I cannot condone killing. I cannot influence or suggest people to kill. I can't 
use third party to kill someone I can't influence, suggest, uh, uh, otherwise uh, indirectly or subliminally, like, you know, behind, behind, between the lines kind of thing, suggest violence or, or killing in any way. Otherwise, I'll be defeated as a monk and I cannot ordain as a monk uh, ever again in this lifetime. So this is why this speech is very important and you have to, don't misunderstand me, I'm not condoning violence, right? I'm talking about the, like I said before, I'm talking about the the complexity of when someone is resentful or, or when someone is wants to take revenge on you, how to deal with that. It's very hard to deal with, right? So the best thing to do going forward right now is be careful who you deal with, how, how you deal with people from now on. Because even right now, we're in a real uh, very uh, tumultuous uh, time in our countries. Um, yeah, anything you say, like you get the wrong pronoun or uh, you talk about race or you talk about anything, people aren't relaxed like they used to be. Right? So even now, it's more you need to pay more attention to your verbal action. Even to people you're uncomfortable with or you don't get along with, be careful. Right? Have good etiquette in your verbal. Learn to disagree uh, amicably. Learn diplomacy. One thing my father said to me when I was in my early 20s, he said, son, you need to learn diplomacy. You're too aggressive. You're too harsh in your speech. And I've worked on it ever since. It's true. Uh, diplomacy is really, really important. But more than diplomacy, it's the right speech. I've talked about that, right? It's talking correctly to people. This will save you. Uh, a lot of trouble. It will minimize a lot of trouble for you. Physical action, the way you, uh, like, you know, if you throw someone at someone or, you know, you shove someone out of the way, you know, these little movements, these little actions can affect people's minds, can cause resentment in other people. It's that easy, okay? Just reflect on yourself. Reflect on yourself how easy it is to rock your own world. You know, if someone says the wrong thing to you, how easy it is to trigger off something. As that, that's the new term these days, trigger off. Or to create some kind of turmoil inside you. Or if someone pushes you to the, to the side in a, you know, walking somewhere down the street or something, how that affects you, right? It does bother you, right? So this is where brutal honesty and, brutal re and, and clear reflection, wise reflection on the three actions is really important. Mental health. Mental health is reflecting on your mind and what your mind's doing and trying to improve that and cleaning all the cleaning all the, the kilesa, all the uh, defilements and all the negative thinking, all the about people and things. This is where goodwill comes in, developing goodwill for oneself, goodwill for others, compassion for oneself, compassion for others, joy for oneself, joy for others, equanimity for oneself, equanimity for others. That's where the four brahma Four Brahma Viharas helps us a lot, the development of those four qualities and virtues. Because where those four things exist in abundance, it's, there's no, there's, it's, it's hard to have any kind of hate or anger inside when those four things are abundant, right? And, and your actions will only be along the lines of uh, goodness and wholesomeness. But remember, sometimes uh, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't, old cliché. As you know, I like to use old cliches, but this is a fact. Sometimes, with no matter how much you try or how hard you try with certain people, um, you know, it never works. So the best thing to do there, if you can do it, is just avoid them fully. Avoid, silent, avoid, avoid, avoid. But sometimes it comes to you. When it comes to you, it's yours. That's the plate. The food is the food on the plate is yours to eat. It's coming to you for a reason, for whatever reason. It's a consequence of something. So try to deal with it in a way uh, that is the peaceful as possible, as intelligent as possible. Use skillful and profitable means to get yourself out of that situation, and try to cause minimal or none or minimal harm to the other person. Now, last thing I'll say on this conversation because this is a very packed very packed uh subject and a lot of things to unpack and it's not over yet there's more to talk on this uh and you know depending on what comments i get and what questions i get or what i reflect on uh in these next few days uh, i might do another video on this as well but 
the thing is, right, the problem with verbal action, right, this is where dukkha is in effect. You could say, like I said in another video, you could say to someone anything and it might cause a problem with that person depending on how they're thinking or what frame of mind they're in. Uh, it could create a problem. This is why, this is why silence is golden, right? Silence is golden, okay? That's the meaning of that cliche. But it's also the meaning as sometimes less is better, especially when you're not sure with certain people. And sometimes, you know, you don't mean to offend, but you offend. It's no different when someone is talking to, uh, to you. Someone might be assuming something because of the way you look or the way you're dressing or the, sit or the environment or the situation, and they might have assumed wrong, and, they, and you might get offended, okay? Now, at this point, at this point, uh, from a self, uh, I guess, uh, development point of view, when that defense comes, like I say to a lot of my students and followers, I say, when bad stuff comes your way, just see it as a debt coming back, as a consequence coming back. See it as a, a, an opportunity to pay off a debt. So when you get scorned, when you get, uh, when someone says something unpleasant to you, things like this, just be like the broken bell. Be like the broken bell. I'm glad you waited to the end to know what the the title of this video is uh the broken bell right so th this one is a story that uh i guess is quite popular uh where you you know when you hit a normal bell it reverberates and it, the vibration goes all over the place right so in other words it's like a, a, re a strong reaction and everybody's affected okay when the bell gets hit do you really want to be a person like that? That's the question I want to ask you. So in other words, if someone ticks you off or makes you angry, do you want the reaction to make everybody else around you feel uncomfortable? Not like the bell, which is a pleasant sound, right? Or actually, you can make the sound pleasant, but pleasant is in the eyes of the beholder. What you find pleasant is definitely not what someone else finds pleasant. But the broken bell, definitely. So in other words, when you hit a broken bell, it just, the sound pretty much stops. It, it's like a thud. It hits and it just stops right there. It doesn't reverberate and affect others, right? So that's something you can aim for in how you deal with other people, how you deal with conflict and confrontation or how you deal with negative situations when they come your way to try to work towards being like the broken bell. Now, that's not going to work all the time. It's not going to work all the time, particularly if someone is has heavy resentment towards you, wants heavy revenge towards you, the broken bell analogy may not work. What works there is the tolerant, try to tolerate it and try to maneuver it in a skillful way where no harm will come to yourself and that person, right? But in most cases, the broken bell analogy really works. It, 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 it's, it's apt and it, and it has its place. So I encourage you to be like the broken bell.